our picture book. No, it doesn't have your picture. There you so, go. So, take a deep breath. Let it out. And please continue to breathe as we know together <laughs> that there is a presence and a power within us all that is around us, moves through us, and comes back to us. That we are spiritual beings living in a spiritual universe governed by spiritual law. And so knowing that whatever this presence and power is, it is everything, everywhere, everyone. It is all in all as all. Then we know that each one of us being made out of divine substance has within us everything that God is. So we are already prosperous, we are already healthy, we are already loved and loving, we are already successful, we are already joy-filled, we are already a being of peace, it's already done. And we take a minute to simply feel into that part of us that is one with all, that is connected to everything, that is the presence of spirit in us now. And so we open up our awareness that we have this amazingness inside of us and that we can use it to create our world in a healthy, positive, joy-filled way. And so we know that whatever it is we need to know this night, we know. Whatever it is we need to do, we do. And we use this law and this presence consciously, creatively, and manifest the life of our dreams. And so, yay, I move into gratitude. Everything has already been given. And we say yes and release this treatment into all that spirit is, all that God is, knowing that God is all, as together we say, and, and so it is. is. Wonderful, <coughs> wonderful. Come on in. I got a little bit of a late start tonight because I was out hunting down my recorder. John took it with him. How many people were here when he showed that UPS commercial? Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. On a Sunday. On a Sunday. The UPS yeah. commercial yeah. about the, the guy that lives in High Point that is sending yeah. Yeah. millions of books oh, yeah. Yeah. to South Africa. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's actually a UPS commercial. It's a fantastic commercial. But John ran across that and knows the guy, Robert Brown. Oh. And he lives in High Point. He's on the, um, the board of uh, High Point University. He's on the Horatio Algiers. Algiers. Alger. Alger, that that group that gives out awards to people who have, you know, really risen up in their lives, oh, and know. and so on the way back from uh, Maryland and Washington D.C. this morning, John stopped by and interviewed his old friend for Science of Mind magazine. Oh. Yes. Oh. And so he took the recorder on the way out the door last Thursday, said, "I'll give it back to you by class." <laughs> I called him at five of and said. I need my recorder. <laughs> so it was a swap off in the parking lot of the recorder. But one of the things he shared with me just a little bit, he hasn't been home long, shared with me just a little bit about this guy, that the reason that, that um, the UPS commercial was so moving was that he said when he was a young man going off to college, his grandmother gave him a book. And he read it hundreds of times. And that that book really inspired him to do the amazing things that he's done. Um, he's pretty famous. And at the end of the UPS commercial, uh, UPS came in and, and packed up all of his books. He collects textbooks for people in South Africa where they don't have books. Um, and at the end of the commercial, UPS came in and stacked it all up and wrapped it and promised to ship them all to South Africa. Um, and, and they said, then we want to give you a gift. And the gift was a copy of the book that his grandmother had given him, which was called It's Up to You by Ernest Holmes. <laughs> and John was telling me the story that that uh, Robert Brown told him this morning about how he got that book. His grandmother was the daughter of a slave. 
They lived in High Point, North Carolina. She had a third grade education and could not read much beyond signing her name. And she worked as a domestic and she saved her pennies. And even though she couldn't read the book, when she saw the book, she knew she had to save her money and buy it because she could make out the title, It's Up to You. Mm. And she couldn't read the book, but she gave it first to her son. She was raising her children and her grandchildren all in like a one-room shed, lean-to kind of thing back in the 40s. Um, and she gave it to her son. His son read, her son read it and read it and read it and then left it when he went to college. And so she gave it to her grandson, Robert, when he was going off to college. And I was saying to John, I said, you know, we've got this big thing, which I think is pretty ego-based, but still it sounds cool to hear it. Well, we have a, an intention of touching 100 million lives. How many lives do you think just Robert Brown touched? Mm -hmm. He was very instrumental in the um, civil rights movement. He brought Nelson Mandela's children to the U.S. and paid for their college education when Mandela was in prison. He went with Coretta King to pick up her husband's body mm -hmm. after he was shot. So this is a man that has, has had his finger on the change of consciousness in this country for decades and it all started with an Ernest Holmes book called It's Up to You. So I said, just in that alone, the millions and millions of lives that have been touched through that have already happened. And, and it just is a wonderful thing. And, and uh, he actually remembered John because he helped John get his job in working for Robert Schuller in the Peacemakers program that John did of holding symposiums all around the country addressing youth violence. And, and John had to kind of remind him a little bit, but then he said, oh yeah, I remember you, I, I remember you. So that was just a wonderful story, a, a way that we don't know, you know, we talk about the world within affecting the world without, and the world within is definitely uh, an aspect, of, or, or intuition is an aspect of that world within. And here's a woman who had mouths to feed and and didn't have much going on, and she just knew she had to save her pennies and buy that book. And so she followed that intuition, and then the uh, creations, the uh, Wallace, uh, uh, Charles Hanel talks about how you have a, a cause and it has an effect, but then that effect continues to move things. And you don't know the domino effect that one idea or thought is having. So here she did that, never knowing the dominoes that would fall all around the world because of her willingness to follow her intuition. And I just thought that was such a cool story. It's such a cool story. And he had no idea who Ernest Holmes was, never knew he wrote another book, <laughs> just knew that that book changed his life. In High Point, right down the street, three hours away. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. It's up to you, is the book? It's up to you, yes. Yes. So last week, I gave you a lot of concrete work to do. And um, I'm very interested in whether you did it, and how it went, how you're doing. Rebecca. Um, I asked you for an affirmation because I felt like I was scattered, and you said, I am clear, and so I've been doing that as I just go about my day. I'm clear, I'm clear, I'm clear, and one of the career options that was on my plate, I um, went in to ask about it, and it is now off the plate, and it was like, I didn't feel bad about it, I just felt like, oh, good, there's a sign, that's not meant to happen, so something and something wonderful is coming along. So. That's great, I am so grateful for every closed door, Yeah. because that means that that wasn't mine, so why waste my time chasing after something that's not mine? Congratulations! Yay! Who has their hand up, Drew? Who has their hand up over here? Nobody's fessing up. Who else? <laughs> <laughs> so, does that mean that you didn't do it? No, it doesn't mean that I didn't do it. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, did, I did the affirmation. 
things, and I I still am doing the affirmations. And for two nights in a row, I had not had to take pain medicine. Whoa! Yay! Yay. Yay. Say that Jump. last part again for the last two nights. I haven't had to take pain medicine. Yay! Nice. Yeah. Um, I've uh, I did affirmations a little before it, so this is kind of from that too. But um, I did it a little more, and I kind of like stacked it and kept. Um, and I've I've manifested. Um, it's all in real estate, and I've manifested literally like seven people in the past week. Um, just uh, one mentor that I'm actually going to start a business with. Um, just and I, you know, I, I believe it's your word creates. I mean, it's I haven't really done anything else. I haven't. Up visualization, I just did my word and it just blew up. And it's, <laughs> so it works. I just did my word as if you could ever have a just. <laughs> One. Uh, I've had like uh, the past three weeks have been pretty tumultuous for me. I've had crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, cra crazy stuff ha happened to me. Uh, uh, some of it involved vandalism, mm -hmm. and but anyway, uh, it, and it was in the midst of searching for work, for permanent work, and and um, so since you gave us the assignment for as to um, for saying uh, affirmation, I've been saying the affirmation, uh, "I am a success" over and over again. And um, and so since then, my my caseworker at the VA has has been able to um, help me um, get a job interview with a Double Tree Motel, and they're seriously considering me after today's interview, yes. considering me for hire. So, yeah. Yeah. Sandy, <laughs> one of the first things that you taught me was affirmations, and it's good to be taken back to the basics and remember how smooth and good that works mm -hmm. and how wonderful it works. And we filed our taxes for the first time jointly, and it was a very positive, pleasant experience. Mm -hmm. The reaping the harvests of marriage. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> did. Good for you. Good for you. Drew. I was actually doing this affirmation all along, and keeping it in the back of my head mantra, just you know. And but I learned to bring it down, to hone it, refine it. You know, successful, and it, it's really, it's helped a lot. Things are going more smoothly than they used to. You know, the, the, you know, the whole affirmation thing. So it's 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 working. Of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. Yay. Who else? Susan. I was using, well, I, I get going back and forth, but mostly is I am healthy. Short, sweet. Sometimes it was I am serene. And I had less pain or less obsessiveness. I don't know which one comes first. I'm less obsessing. Obsessing less on the pain, and then there's no pain to obsess about. <laughs> Which one comes first, the world within or the world without? Pain, pain, pain. pain. So, yes, it's the obsession. <laughs> it messes you up, freaks you out, pours adrenaline into your system, and all of a sudden you're in pain. Right. Michaela. Well, I've been saying I am happy, I am happy, I am happy. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> So therefore, I am happy and I have all this stuff going on because I'm happy and also when I was doing my work today with my tutor, I I was a little upset with my mistakes and I was like, I don't need to do that. I'm happy. <laughs> Getting upset helps me think more clearly. <laughs> so good for you. Good for you. Who else? Is there anyone who had trouble doing it? 
And I'm not going to make you wrong or beat you up or anything. Is there anyone who didn't do it? Robin. I wasn't here last week. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an excuse. I didn't want to say anything because uh, I didn't do anything special. And I wasn't here last week. But I do affirmations every day. Right. So it's something that, that's just, uh, kind of like you said, just progresses and, and uh, becomes part of you. And uh, the only thing I can say is uh, I, en I enjoy uh, my life. I enjoy uh, the people I meet. And uh, life is wonderful. And, I, it, and it, it, it does come from mind and attitude. And uh, it leads to love, and uh, love leads to kindness. So it all works. It does. It does. And when you're kind, you're kind to yourself, and you're kind to everyone else. So be kind to Michaela <laughs> when she makes a mistake. It's just a mistake. It always, always change. Good for you. Thank you, Joy. It was a mistake on pencil. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the things that I love about um, Charles Cornell is his empowerment of the individual. And he says that in order to create change in your life, or in order to effectively use the law, you have to do three things. One is you have to have a knowledge of your power, which is what you get when you come here. We're telling you, you are a powerful being. You're creating your experience. Nobody's doing anything to you. Nobody can take anything that's yours. Nobody can give you anything that doesn't belong to you. It's not about anyone or anything outside of you. It's always you. You have the power. You're a spiritual being living in a spiritual universe governed by spiritual law. You can use that law and manifest your life. For that matter, you are using that law and manifesting your life. And the second thing he says is that you have to have the courage to dare. You have to have the courage to dare what? To dare your fears. Step outside of the box. Step outside of the box. What, Michaela? To dare your fears. To Come dare on. your peers is one thing. Yes. <coughs> fears. 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 Oh, fears. To dare your fears. Oh, I dare you. I dare you. I love that. I love that. This terrible thing will happen. I dare you. That's pretty cool. And then what did you say, Susan? Be yourself. To be yourself, exactly. You have to dare to step out of the box, to challenge your fears, to be yourself. And to do that may ask a lot of you, because all of a sudden, you're turning your back on who you thought you were, and allowing yourself to move into who you don't know yet. And that takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage to do that. And then he says you have to have the faith to do, which means you've got to go ahead and do something. A lot of people come into this teaching and they get the knowledge. A lot of people are really good. They understand this. They've got the lingo. They understand the concepts. But they don't have the next two steps, which is the courage to dare and the faith to do. And so if you simply understand this, but it's too hard or it takes up too much time or, you know, it just didn't work out for you to do the within work, to have the without shift, and you are, are accepting of that level of um, performance, then the outside doesn't shift. And sometimes people get frustrated and angry and they blame and they say, oh, this is a bunch of hooey and or everyone else can manifest their reality except for me. And, and what that shows me is that they're not moving along on these steps. That simply reading a book will not change your life. Now, if you read that book and you have the courage to go against what you, the direction you were going before, the faith to take action on it, then yes, re reading a book will change your life. <coughs> Coming to a class will not change your life unless you do what the class is talking about. So you have, unless you have the faith to step out and make a change in your world. And so I think it's really important for us to, to really get that <coughs> the payoff 
or, or the, the pay in for the pay off is, is um, I don't want to say is a lot of hard work because I don't want to set you up for that. It's energy going out. And when, when we talk about um, being happy, being happy, being happy, you would think that with a payoff of being happy, people would be willing to put the time in to say, I don't have to beat myself up over that. I can choose to be happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Oh my God, it's a beautiful day. I'm happy. People would be willing to put the energy into that for the payoff of happiness. Or if you want to have the payoff of money, success, prosperity, stuff that sparkles in life and goes vroom vroom, you know, whatever it may be, then it seems to me like a no-brainer that people would be willing to put the energy in to get that out. And yet, it seems to go against human nature to change, which is bizarre to me. We hold on to the way things are, even if we are very unhappy about them. We cling to them. It's the, the idea that um, fear of the unknown is greater than fear of the known. And one of the, um, the growth signs is that when fear of the unknown, when, when the pain of staying where you are is greater than your fear of changing, then you'll change. But until then, most people will stay the same. So I want to really encourage you to incorporate this awareness of the world within into your daily routine. <clears throat> and to do it with affirmations, self-talk. Be mindful of the kind of music you listen to. Be mindful of the conversations that you have. Be mindful of, if you have a television, what you turn it on to and listen to. Steve. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess I should have raised my hand about um I was doing affirmations, and I, I do them not just on my subject of how to do like a broad, because for me, they're all connected. And I guess I noticed my own resistance towards them, so like I know they work, and I know they're gonna work, but it's like, I'm not gonna pretend, like in front of everyone, that like, oh, they're just so easy, I just do them, you know what I mean? Like, they're very profound, and they're scary for me. I mean, uh, that's why, I do think, like, that's why I'm here to do them. I know they work, but uh, I'm not going to... I see the resistance in other people as well, but I'm not going to pretend at the same time that they're easy. I would like to tell myself they're easy, of course, <laughs> but uh, I know that they're pretty... Um, yeah, it's definitely, like, going out of your comfort zone for me and going and just starting to see where all my issues are kind of at once is definitely... It's not like just one little area's effect. It's not like, okay, I'm gonna go from like, you know, 30K to 40K. It's not like a business goal. It's like a whole shift of my personality. So I'm not trying to excuse myself. I'm just trying to let everyone know. No, you're know being very honest. And I think you speak to a part of everyone in the room. Well, yeah, and it's the same thing. Yeah, a lot of trust, you know, comes up. I mean, I don't mean to be familiar with this like, me in therapy or anything like that, but it's definitely, I mean, they're profound, let me tell you. Like, affirmations are amazingly profound because you hear contradictions all the time. You know what I mean? Like, about, you know, just the way people talk about your art. It's not, it's like, it's not, in a way, it's like not enough just to feel like happy or trust. It's like, you know, hustle or, you know, it's hard work or, you know, I'm whole and healthy, but now I'm going to go to the doctor. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, so, it's definitely, it's a very profound experience to do these things. So I think that, that everyone, if, if they don't have an active fear, they have a potential fear of who they will be. Yeah. You know, it's like Marianne Williamson's quote, where we're not afraid of our smallness, we're afraid of our magnificence. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm not, uh, hiding under the excuse of all of these problems. And if I really do bust out into my greatness and my magnificence, well, who in the world is that? And do I really want that? Because I know how to deal with my problems, but I'm not sure how to be magnificent. And so to acknowledge that there's that worry, you know that affirmations work, you know that what you think and speak manifests, <laughs> you know, I swallowed a piece of paper. <laughs> you know that there's a, 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 an amazing.
presence and power within you that our job is to let out into our world. And yet at the same time, there is a part of us that resists it. Abraham calls it defending our limitations. And every time we talk about our problems, or every time we make ourselves small in any way, shape, or form, then we are defending our, our smallness, our limitations, instead of being willing to risk and jump forward into our greatness. So I think that was a really honest share. And congratulations for your awareness and for sticking with it, because I know that every giant step I've had in my personal growth, I've always been grateful for it after it happened. Yeah. It's like being in a really bad relationship and knowing you need to leave, but being afraid of what's gonna happen, and then you leave and go, oh, I'm so glad that I got out of there. So when we're in a bad relationship with our thoughts, with our beliefs and our feelings, and we know that we need to leave that and go be in a different kind of a relationship with a part of us that is our cheerleader and our coach, and rah, 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 you got the whole universe lifting you up. You, you know, the, the desire is day of sire, father, and spirit whispering into your ear, this is what is yours to do. You're meant to be a world traveler. You're meant to drive race cars. You're meant to be a, a, a wonderful chef. Whatever it is that is ours to do, of course it's already there. And all we need to do is stop running away from it and allow either it to catch up with us or us to catch up with it. <clears throat> Sometimes I think it's just standing still and letting everything that we've already set in motion find us. So that's wonderful. And it's an important thing to get because this can be a very frustrating teaching. I stand here and say, you can have whatever you want. You can have the life of your dreams. You can do what you want to do. You can go where you want to go. You can have what you want to have. You can be who you want to be. You can do that, bar none. I don't care what your circumstances are. And then, well, it's a minute later and we haven't done that yet. Or climbing out of the pit when it doesn't happen with a a lottery ticket falling in our lap seems like taking so long. I'm doing this work. I'm going to class. I'm going to the center. I'm reading. I'm, I'm writing. I'm journaling. I'm meditating. I'm doing treatment. I'm doing affirmations. I'm doing all this stuff and it hasn't happened yet. And I think that that's one of the really critical times in our lives where we want to bail on ourselves and go back into the old life. And that is a really bad time to bail. Because the very fact that you're having frustration, for me, means that it's close. It's close. What happens to a runner when they hit the wall? They don't go any faster. No, when they hit the wall, when a runner hits the wall, that's the time to not stop. And if they keep on going right after they hit that wall, feels like they can't take another step, they get what's called a runner's high. And they get lifted up by the, the chemical process in their body, busts them through to another level, and then they can run and breathe, and they're, they're you know, experiencing all of this this wonderful feeling, and sometimes on our spiritual path, when we get to the place that says, this is taking forever, I must be doing it wrong. Beat, 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 beat. I must not have the power. Spirit showed up as everybody on planet Earth but me. You know, that kind of thing. When we, when we get to that point, that's the time that I really want to encourage you to continue going forward. Do not bail on yourself, because what you're bailing on is the whole rest of your life. You're bailing on the rest of your life. And I've seen people do it. They come into this teaching, they get an understanding of it, which means, okay, I can have it just like that. Well, where is it? You can have it just like that if you do all of the work to, to shift into that vibration and that acceptance and having that mental equivalent of it. You can have it just like that. But if you haven't done that, then you're getting exactly what's in alignment with where you are. And so celebrate your growth steps. Whatever they are, the very fact that something changed is an indication that everything is changing because everything is all connected. It doesn't really matter what you're affirming. If you're affirming prosperity or health or the perfect and right job or a sense of clarity or confidence, whatever, it's all the same thing. So what you're doing is you're bringing yourself up into a different state of consciousness and every time something shifts, anything shifts, notice that and celebrate it. 
How many were here in the summer prosperity class? What did we do every time anything happened? Yeah. We yeah. 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 the celebration dance. We did the happy dance. Mae McCarthy is coming on the first Sunday in June. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, it, that's how far out she's booked. So she'll be here on the first Sunday in June. Uh, but it was so important that we anchor in, things are changing. I did this. Oh, but it was just a parking space. No, 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 it's a parking space. Oh, it's just a penny. No, 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 it's a penny. Oh, it was just that I got through to on that, on that phone. Yes, celebrate it, acknowledge it, get a sense of yourself as moving through the circumstances in your life, and what will happen is you will move more. But if it's, oh, well, that was just, oh, that doesn't matter, oh, that doesn't count, thank you, then, um, then that's what you'll create, that nothing's happening, and that only stagnation exists, and that's a dangerous place to be, because if you're stagnant, you're going to die. If a, a body of water is stagnant, if your uh, circulatory system, or your breathing, or your digestion, or whatever is stagnant, you are, are dead, is what happens. So you don't want to allow your life to be stagnant by lying to yourself and saying nothing's moving. Everything's moving. Everything's changing. And as we open up to that and watch it manifest in our lives, it manifests with that change. Until, until things start going so fast that you call me and go, Okay, I just need to either slow it down a little bit or, or have a little help shifting with all of the things that are happening. And what a fantastic place to be instead of sitting on the couch going, my life is horrible and there's no way out and I'm trapped and it's never going to change. That's, that's a, a depressed, awful place to be. So what we want to do is we want to practice the change, but it doesn't just happen with knowledge. Knowledge is great, but that's you just aware. Well, you're creating your reality. You did that. Really? That's all you want to do with this teaching is go there? There's a thing called um, to me, by me, through me, and as me. They're called states of consciousness. Just write it down for you. say in my life that if I don't have enough money, then um, it's because the government's taking it all, or the prices are too high, or I'm being ripped off by my employer. The only thing I can do is create it um, uh, by the sweat of my brow and go out and get a second job. That thing is life is always happening to me. I am a victim. I didn't do this. I didn't have anything to do with it, and I can't change it. And as long as we're in that victim mentality, in that victim role, we don't have to change anything. Because we can't. So with that idea, there's a safety in that we don't have to do anything, but it's a two-edged sword because that means we can't do anything to fix our lives. So that's the first level. <laughs> now I know why I was put away without the cap. <coughs> They're hard to get off. <laughs> so that's the first level. The second level is, oh, I have an impact on my life. Either I can work longer and harder, or I can use these things called affirmations, or uh, uh, words, or uh, prayers, or, or something like that. And I can actually make things happen in my life. And that's a big draw of this teaching. You can have money. I can teach you how to make money. I can teach you how to make money fall out of the sky. I can teach you how to make things work and doors open and deals close in your life. And by making it happen, as was so wonderfully stated in my talk 
two weeks ago, that the difference between making it so and allowing it to be so, making it so you can do that, but because you're creating exactly what you think it should be, then you're limited, limiting the possibilities of the creation down to what you can open up to and accept, and you're also expending a lot of energy for it. In the, uh, the Science of Mind textbook, Ernest says, if you're done with your spiritual practice and you're tired, you've done it wrong. <laughs> it should be lifting you and energizing you and exciting you. And that's why I like to do it in the morning, so that I take that into my day. But we're not using willpower, we're not, uh, well, in the, in the binary, <coughs> we are using willpower, and we are at times forcing things to come into form because we don't have the trust that uh, Charles Hanel talked about. So that's the second level, and then the third level is through me, and that's where you get that something is happening. Something amazing is happening, and it's showing up as your life. You can actually feel the energy coming through you, and when you're doing your affirmations, it's like you're, you're channeling this is that me? That's me. Oh. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> You're channeling this energy that's coming through you, and things happen that you didn't expect, things that you thought were going to happen don't, and you're happy about that, and then things that you didn't even realize were in the works show up, and it's amazing, and life is just wonderful, and this, this thing is, you're a part of it without, God is my co-pilot, you know, without giving away your power, but there's a, a part of something that, there's something that you are a part of that includes you but is greater than you at the same time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And for me, it's going from my conscious awareness to my whole being awareness. And then the fourth one is as me. I think that's where you get to the uh, cosmic consciousness of the Christ and the Buddha and the sainthood of Mother Teresa that, that she or, or they are just, they're, they're not even, they're, they're holding on for the ride, is how I would put it that there has been a shift of consciousness so great that the, the concept of me is not big at all in that. And there is simply an awareness of connection and oneness, I and the Father are one, that kind of thing, uh, is the, the through me. And, and I don't know anybody like that. You know, uh, uh, on my maybe to-do list was to go see Sai Baba in India who was reported to be one of the great avatars, and I've heard people say that uh, Ganga Ji and, and some other people are of that consciousness. I think, frankly, the closest I get to it is Rob Worgen on a Wednesday night, and he's on stage, and he gets out of the way. Something <laughs> happens to him, but that may even be through me instead of as me. I don't know. But don't get stuck with by me. And that's something that I see so many people do. And what you're doing is you're, you're discounting the teaching by only taking it to, okay, well, I'm not a victim anymore. <coughs> I'm going to make my life the way I want it. That's not it. Having to force creation so that we don't feel insecure, having to make our lives show up in a certain way so that we can still keep our control issues, because by me is very much a position of being in control. And really, to have that greater manifestation, there is a release of control to allow the, the greater energy, the greater awareness to come through us and manifest into form in ways that we didn't even, even have a clue about. And so we don't want to get stuck in by me, but we certainly don't want to get stuck in two. So usually the journey is... You come into the center, and life is just screwing you over. And then Barbara and John and whoever else teaches you some handy-dandy tricks to create a different reality. It's called spiritual mind treatment, meditation, affirmation, monitoring your thought, come to class, be happy, open up your heart, let's make a better life. But we also don't want to stay there. And to let go of by me, I think, is where you've got to have the courage and the faith. You've got to have the courage to go beyond 
the way you think you'll be okay. Well, I can't walk away from that job. I'm, I may be homeless. Well, you may be homeless. Neil Donald Walsh was homeless. Eckhart Tolle was homeless. That might be a wonderful part of your journey, but even if you are homeless, things will be very <coughs> light in your world. It won't be painful or, or this terrible, terrible experience. So you have to have the courage to go against who you think you are, to let it go, and to move into the great unknown of you don't know what, and you have to have the faith to go ahead and do it. Judith. That talk you gave what was two weeks ago about Make It So, that really, really affected me. And it just kind of is gelling right this second. Um, I was out here the other day shooting the creek, and um, I went home and I went to edit the images, and they sucked. They really were bad. They were muddy and they just looked terrible. But I was forcing it. I was trying to make it what I wanted to make it. So I let it go. And the affirmation I've been saying, it's like over and over and over and over again, is I'm in my right and perfect place. And yesterday I went back and I edited them again, and all of a sudden they just popped. And it was like, like it's magic. like amazing what they look like now. It's just amazing. And I even found that, you know, I'm a Jersey driver, so here is like hell for me sometimes. <laughs> and uh, um, so I've been repeating, I'm in my right and perfect place, I'm in my right, and people are getting out of my way. <laughs> I, sure, because you were holding them there by going, that person's in my way. Even though they wanted to move over, they couldn't. You had a tractor beam on them, <laughs> and they couldn't get out of your way. You do the same thing with, that problem is in my life. That problem is wrong. That problem scares me. I've got a lot of energy on that problem. It can't go away. It and, can't go away until we go away from the problem. And I just feel like all of a sudden, like, um, gently things are opening. You know, gently, they're just kind of like I'm getting these little rays of, oh yeah, you know, it's, it's nice. It's nice, finally, it's like the culmination of this past year since I've been coming here. And Good. I thank you. Good. Why do we want things by me? What do we think we're going to... Jane, I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. Just go ahead. Well, but, but the by me has always. When I was a little kid, I had a crazy father who was wanted to control my thoughts and this and that. So, so I uh, and then suddenly I realized I can make a decision and act on it, and it was me. Right. And so in that case, thing things were happening, and I by me, and to me that was really good. By me is way better than to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's way better. Yeah, and I mean, when you I'm have gonna... things happening to you in your life that you have no say over, no control over, and yeah. you are being victimized and hurt, by me is a great thing. And I, I was thrilled with that, and I don't think I've ever uh, recovered from that. <laughs> <laughs> I still think if I do something that you know, I like, I think, I did that. You did, but, but consider your story last week where you thought someone was going to hurt your car, tattooed guy at the car wash, and instead he came in and asked you if he could fix your bumper, and he went out there and fixed your bumper. You did not make that happen. No. You let that happen in your life. You sat, sat here last week and said, I have gone from people hitting me on Merriman Avenue, outside of Staples, <laughs> running right into you as a victim, to learning how to create your life, and then having somebody offer to fix your car in the parking lot. The car wash fellow did. I know, but that's that was through me. That required no effort on your part, no pre-planning. You didn't say, I'm going to go to the car wash and see if I can get that guy to fix my bumper. You didn't do that. You just opened to the fact that you were safe and supported, and good things came into your life. And I liked the guy. Yeah, of course you did, because Rumi has an element of love to it. So of course you're going to like the guy. You're going to be in a much better state. You're going to be more open when you're in through me. And so as, as my students, and I do this every few months, I encourage you not to stop with the, um, the very obvious prize of science of mind. 
Don't stop with, oh, I know how to create money. Oh, I can get a parking spot. Oh, I can have this happen. I can make this happen. I remember once someone called me from Office Depot and called me on the phone and said, please do a treatment for me that I find, and they rattled off this ink or something that they were looking for, and I said, no. <laughs> no, I am not your put a request in the machine and out pops a treatment. And I will not desecrate this amazing process by treating for you to find that. That is just temporary, what's it called? Um, <laughs> immediate gratification based on an idea of how you're going to be okay. I can't be okay without this box of ink. That's ridiculous. And whatever you're creating in your world is your creation. So don't stop at by me in this teaching. Who had their hand up? Me. Juan. Um, I was thinking there's probably different levels of through me depending on how much will you have to exert. Like how, um, like say if you say your affirmations and you like force them and. That's by me. Okay. That's fine. And sometimes that's good. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm safe. I'm safe. Everything's okay. Come on, Barbara. Everything's okay. It doesn't matter about that stuff. I'm happy. I'm safe. Everything's okay. That's, that's okay because I'm going from to me, feeling victimized, to the great jump into by me. I can get a hold of this, but then I want to go to through me. I want to let go of all of that. All of the fear, all of the anxiety, all of the effort. I'm going to let it go and I want to ride <coughs> that wave of spirit and let it take me instead of me having to swim all by myself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Drew and then Karen and then Jane. I speak only for myself, but uh, I see by me as, as the baby steps. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the one I go to through me, Yes, sometimes I'll fall back to buy me and stuff. It's, it's, it's a learning, it's like riding a bicycle or learning how to cast a, a I line. still fall back to to me. <laughs> <laughs> Some days, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's quicker to get back up, you know. Yes. It's, every time it's quicker. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you're, you know, you can go fishing by me and like throw that line out there to get a fish and slap it on the ground a few times. And then you look at the guy next to you and he's just sitting there in the chair going, we have to. That's We're not whole, caring if you catch the fish whole, at all. Yeah, that's the whole through me. He's like zing it way out. I'm like, how do you do that? You know, it's, like, it's just that effortless level of like, oh, this is really cool. This is really cool. And you, sometimes you fall back through and like, but being in that beautiful place. I mean, you know what the prosperity thing. I'm stepping on diamonds, and we're, I'm just. I wasn't even looking for them. You know? Right. And, right. Uh, and, 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 and simply by demonstrating the dime on the ground over and over again, you felt connected and supported and, and that things were happening. If we can demonstrate metal stamped out on the ground at our feet, that's pretty amazing. Diamonds. Oh, diamonds. Diamonds. Yes, yes. And, and, and I wasn't treating for anything. I was treating for something personal, internal. And during my internal mantra, when I was running the whole thing and doing it, this weird music in the back of my head was pennies from heaven. The whole, I at the end, you know, I had a bucket full of pennies I was finding everywhere. <laughs> Just from that simple thing. I'm like, <laughs> it doesn't work. It's, it's a wonderful way to check out your consciousness. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, how am I seeing the world? Am I seeing that things are happening to me? Am I making them happen? Which can be fine. Yeah. Or am I dancing into that there is a power and a presence that moves through me and it lifts me and it's, it's creative and it's attracting to me all of these great things and I don't need to know what they are and I don't have to have a list and I don't have to focus them. I can just be open to it. Karen, Jane, and then Betty. So is that like, through me, would that be like being able to kind of say and trust the universe takes care of me if I just get out of its way and allow it to do that. And yes. And kind of focus on getting out of the Yes. Way. One of my mantras every morning was that only that which is for my highest and best goes out from me this day. And only that which is for my highest, highest and best comes into my experience. And then I could just let it go. 
that whatever I was doing, I was doing as the best of me. And whatever was coming in, was coming in for my best. And so whatever it was, I could trust it, that this was a blessing, and it may be a blessing that came and went, it may have been a surprise, but everything that happened, happened for my, my good. And, and then I could relax, because I have control issues. I, nothing like I used to. So when I was really battling with that, no, I want to make the light turn green. Why? Why do we use this amazing power you want to make feel? the light, pardon me? You want, to, you want to feel in control of the light. Yeah, but I want to not be in control of the light. I want to know that wherever I am is my perfect and right place to be because that's bigger than a green light. I don't want to sacrifice my creative potential of unlimited potentiality for a light because I think that if I stop that there's something wrong with it. That that's my judgment. I want to let that go and know that I'm in my perfect and right place. That the entire universe supports me. My way is made clear and all is unfolding for my good. And that's such a better place to live. Jane. Oh, so yeah, that's what I was going to ask. When I was a little kid, I felt out of control. Everything happened uh, through something else. You know, right, nothing. so you went from to me to by me, and that's great. And now you're learning to go to through me. Yeah, so by, but how about control? Um, in other words, if things happen by me, uh, then it, it, does that mean that uh, it's not under my control? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> control is such a funny thing. I've always thought that we are in absolute control of our life. Who said that? I said I have always thought that we are in absolute control of our life. And at the same time, we have absolutely no control. <laughs> because when we think of control, we're limiting our awareness to our conscious mind, to our judgments of what we think should be in control and what should not be in control and we have taken the giant gift of life and our creative ability and shrunk it down to this little thing and I want to open up to all of my good and if that means that it looks different than I thought it would okay would I rather have a different environment and have a lot greater life or would I like it to look exactly the way I thought it should look yeah. No, I want to have the best life I can so that I can be all that I can be and, and live my life as a powerful spiritual being that I am. And if that means that things are full of surprises, then so be it. Yes. Betty. I was just going to say that I think one of the transitions from by me to through me is when you let go of a specific expectation. Exactly. And, and just allow the universe to give you whatever is right and at the time. And so I think that's one of the, one of the steps in going from by me to through me is, is not limiting your your ex, yourself by having a specific expectation. Right, which Thomas Trower says is dealing at the level of secondary causation, because you think that if it works out that way, then you'll be happy, you'll be safe, all will be well. Right. And instead, we want to go back to the awareness of the presence of the divine and do our work there. Steve and then Morgan. Um, well, I guess I was wondering if you start to get, like do like more through me and you start to allow and you're just starting to feel more content where where, where you're at, uh, not can you also <coughs> can you also be through me but have fleeting moments of like, oh, be, wouldn't it be nice if such like not trying to control and be like this is gonna happen and determinism versus like Oh, it'd be really great if that happened, and then letting it go. Can you still be specific? I'm sure, but I'm you're not you attached. Still be specific. You're not attached to that happening. Okay. Thomas Trowood said that if you allow your purpose to be contingent upon any person, place, or thing, you've descended to the level of secondary causation, because your purpose isn't descended dependent on a person or a place or a thing. Who you are is not dependent on anything outside of you. It goes back to Charles Hanel. Live in the world within. And then the world without will mirror that. Morgan and then Karen. Writer's block, would, would that be something where you, you encounter it because you're trying to force something? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I'm not a writer. Okay. I, I, I don't understand writer's block. When I teach, the clock says it's time. 
and I better open up my mouth and start talking. <laughs> so I, I don't know about writer's block. I don't know about, oh, no, 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 I'll come back in a couple of days <laughs> when I have something to say, or Sunday morning, oh, no, maybe in a few hours if y'all come back. No, I'm, I'm on a timer, you know, and, and the time is on, so I don't understand writer's block. So like this, and the same with painting then, like, like, look if you're at a blank canvas. Again, have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't. I just don't have any idea. I don't, I don't have... I, I'll tell you that there are times as a speaker where we have been taught that if you go blank in the middle of a talk, keep talking. The worst thing you can do is fall silent. And so even if you're talking about nonsense, you can pull it back together. <laughs> Your brain kicks in. But if you give in to that, you know, that, that know that you lost your thought. Pardon me? If you continue to talk, the audience doesn't know that you lost your thought. Or even if they do, it doesn't matter. But you're engaging, you're, you're continuing to act as if, you're continuing to force that creative energy forward. So I don't know if that would work with a, a blank canvas or a a blank piece of paper or not, but that's that's my world is the world of speaking. So Karen, in the book Mutant Message, um, it's about the Aboriginal folks and going on walkabouts and all of that. And one of the things that it talks about is how every morning they this is like an affirmation that they do, which is I open my heart to the goodness of this day, whatever that may be. So that's kind of an example of not having the expectation of what will come, but inviting goodness, whatever that is. Right, and those people can get water out of rocks. Yes. <laughs> so there's some, yeah. some pretty pretty good demonstrating going on. Let's take a break. So one of the ways that we can look at the difference between by me and through me is to compare it with concepts between the absolute and the relative. So when we're looking at things at the level of the relative, they are in relation to other things, which means are they on the world within or the world without? without. The world without is, the, is the, the realm of the relative. So it's without, and this is within. When you're dealing at the level of effect, then um, when you're dealing at the level of effect, you have things that are changing all the time or not changing. The world without the cause and effect. The world without the body and the cell. Without. 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 Changing. 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 And this then is changeless. So when we're dealing with by me, I'm going to make that ink cartridge show up. I've got um, uh, enough money to fill my car up with gas. Um, this thing works out the way that I, I thought it should. Are we dealing with things that change or things that are changeless? Change. Change. Things that change all the time. <clears throat> so when we have by me, we're dealing at the realm of the relative. And when we're looking at through me, then we're dealing where? Absolute. The absolute. So when we deal at the level of the absolute, whoever said um, the, the prayer of the indigenous people of Australia, that their prayer was just that wonderful good and wonderful things happened to them that day. Is that at the level of the relative or the absolute? Absolute. It's at the level of the absolute. And that's the way I want you to start thinking. When you, when you do your affirmations or do your treatment work or set your intentions or something like that, at the level of the relative, I know this deal closes. <laughs> That's okay, but it's not the end-all, be-all. 
What you want to know is what? Not just that the deal closes, you want to know what? That you're successful. That you're successful. What else? So your highest good. That you're abundant. You're healthy. Well, let's keep it at the deal. Successful, highest good, what was the other one? Abundant. Abundant. And this explains Troward's quote, quote, that if your purpose, and if your purpose is to be happy, to live a life of freedom, to be in your joy, to prosper, and to have only that which is your highest good show up, to be successful, and you're treating or affirming that the deal closes, then you're looking at the deal closing as your avenue, your doorway, to what you really want, which is all of these um, loftier kind of experiences. You don't want to say, this person falls in love with me. I'm going to use my spiritual mojo to make them fall in love with me so that I will feel loved and be happy. You don't want that. What you want is to feel loved and to be happy. So, yes, you want something that is changeless, that is always there for you. You want to be a part of all that love is. And I guarantee you, if you move into that state, all kinds of people will fall in love with you. You won't have to try to coerce or manipulate anyone to do that. So what we want to be mindful of is that if we're dealing with something in the world of the outer, person, place, or thing, then we sell ourselves short. Now, sometimes you're willing to do that. I know that this car runs until it go, gets to that gas station in front of that gas pump, all is well. You know, sometimes you want to do that, and sometimes it's, hey, I'm fine anywhere I am. I have OnStar and AAA, you know, <laughs> someone's surely going to bring me some gas, and, and it'll be a wonderful experience. But if you decide to go into the world of buy me and into the world of the relative, just understand that you're closing the options of what the universe can give you. Steve and then Joe. Okay, I was kind of starting to, clear, starting to clarify. But if you go for like, if you understand that you have like a specific goal, right? And you were like, even if you're trying to be like, well that person's, like, an example I read was that uh, like Tom Cruise, uh, Katie Holmes wanted to marry Tom Cruise. And she, when she was 16, she always like fantasized about it. And look at where that got her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but the question is, well, I'm not saying, okay, why is that an I'm not saying, yeah, you get what you ask for, right? But the idea is that if you, if you have something that's like a loftier goal or a goal, don't you, won't you grow, if, you, if you're trying, why is it manipulative to be specific? Because then you have to you grow into goal. it. Maybe you have to grow into it. Maybe like you can't date or find that whether it's dating a specific person or like manif manifesting like a lottery win, why can't you have something specific and then realize that you have to grow into it? Like your ego will you, grow you and can, grow yourself. You can. A couple of things. You don't get what you ask for. You get what you are. A big difference. And I'm not a big fan of goals. Okay. Because when you set a goal, the only thing you get is your goal. And of course you've got to grow into your goal. That's why you set a goal. So you'll have a place to, to grow and expand and to move into, whether it's a physical goal or a financial goal or a business goal, that kind of thing. What I'm saying is that you can do that, but rather than the universe supports you with this much, you're, you've got your goal. And you're going to create your goal and you're going to get your goal. And it might be that it's only this much. So what I want to do is if I have a goal, I'll affirm the goal and bring it into the realm of the absolute. So I always treat that this center thrives. And some people say, well, you got a revolving door. And I say, thank you. You don't know some of the people that have left. <laughs> Why have we not broken through the 300 mark? You know, there should be thousands of people here. I always treat that the center thrives, that the people who call this place home, that their lives get better, that they have a, a better experience because of being a part of this, and then I leave how the number is out of it. And that was not always the case. And I created for myself a lot of frustration, 
you know, we worked up the center to where we had two celebrations and people fighting in the parking lot over parking spaces and things like that. And I didn't find that I was any happier in that environment than I am just trusting that, look at you, you are my favorite people in the whole world because you showed up in my life. So what I do is I know that we thrive, I know that that my life is unfolding wonderfully, that I'm in my perfect and right place doing what I need to do, and whatever comes of that is a delightful surprise. But I don't want to take away your goals. So go ahead and treat for your goal. Know that your business does this, that you reach certain uh, areas, and that you are successful, and that you prosper, and you thrive, and that the entire universe is supporting everything that you do, that you're always in your perfect and right place, that you always know what to do, when to do it, and you do it well. And that takes that and turns it into that. Mm -hmm. But too many people will come up with a list of goals and, the, and, and, you know, John teaches goal setting in the prosperity class. They'll come up with a list of goals, and then they will make those goals happen, and the achievement of those goals is their sign of success. So the goal achievement was the doorway to a feeling of success. Let's just go to the success. My life is going great. Everything I touch turns to gold. I woke up this morning, I am a total success. I have what I need, clients find me, they come out of thin air, money pours into my life, and I'm having such a ball doing everything that I do. I'm in my genius, and life is great. Yeah. So I don't want to take your goals away, but, but I'd like to stretch them out a little bit. And then you definitely have to work your butt off to have a shift in the outer world because you have to make the world within the, the space for that new thing to show up. And, and that's where some people fall short. They say, oh, I just want to be able to visualize it, cut out a picture, say that it's so, but I don't really want to do the growing inside. And then when it doesn't happen, I'll get all mad. And that will give me the excuse to leave this, person, this, this place and go back to my small life, which I, I find very sad. It's just once you get these these ideas to structure like your life in such a way as to not have to change because it's, some people think, easier to stay sick and poor and miserable is, is, is sad for me. And that's why sometimes I just want to grab people and smack them on the side of their head and say, stop it. Don't you realize the price that you're paying for this, for this limited thinking, this limited behavior, and for giving in to your fear? So, yes, you've got to do the work, and I think that anything that causes you to stretch and grow is a good thing. Okay? I get it. Now I get it. Okay. Good, good, good. Joe. I, I was going to say, literally, you kind of answered everything that I wanted, but um, even in the book, Hanel was saying that you have to focus, put it to a camera. You have to see that image, you know? Um, he also did the uh, sculptor with the marble. If you change it every second, it's kind of like, you know, Every 15 minutes, you're not, you're not going to get what you wanted. Right, but that's the actions on the outer. What I'm talking about is the mindset that gets you up every day to go chip on that marble. And he's saying, don't, don't think, oh, it's this. Oh, no, no, this is better. Oh, it's this. Oh, I just heard about this. Oh, it's this. Because that shows a lack of discipline and that you don't really know what you want. Hmm. Yes, yes. And when I read teachers, I always take everything with a grain of salt. You know, this was written in 1918, 1916, something like that. And I've seen people jump from thing to thing, or relationship to relationship. You know, no, it's not out there. It's not dealing with the world without. It's always the world within. And the more that you can up-level the vibration and the consciousness of your awareness of the world within, the better your world without will be. Dakota. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to, to share something for you in particular because sometimes it's also leaving room <coughs> for whatever it is you want to happen, leaving room for it to happen in an unexpected way. And I'm just going to share a story that's very funny. Just over the last month or so, I had a, a pretty big tax problem with, with the IRS. Uh -huh. And I was, and, and it was, it was a, a big problem for me on a variety of levels, and I was scared, and you know, I don't want to fight the government, and um, 
I ended up, I found a, things were going on and I wanted to be able to deploy some money some places and I can't because of this tax thing. So I got a letter in the mail from the IRS and I was so scared to open it that I didn't open it for nine days. <laughs> I had it sitting on my counter and I just couldn't because I was scared. I was scared to engage it. When I finally opened it, it was a letter basically saying that I owed them nothing and I was cleared. <laughs> I, I needed to engage with what was in front of me, even though it was scary. So the thing is, leaving room for something to happen in an unexpected way is like really important. And that for me was the great lesson out of that. I was like, oh my gosh, I so wasn't expecting this. And it was the gift. So. Yay. Wonderful, Dakota. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So in this idea, of going from the world within to the world without, thinking that it's so tempting to just manipulate the creations of our lives to fit our preconceived idea of what we want it to look like, moving beyond the, uh, that idea into a much more vague, kind of wooey, wooey space is a little tricky. And the way that you can monitor yourself is, do I feel like someone or something outside of me, the IRS, or whatever is making me do something, doing something to me, taking something away from me, can hurt me or limit me in any way. And if I feel that way, that is the to me. And by all means, let's move from the to me to the by me. Let's make a plan. Let's figure out what we're gonna do. Let's get out of this situation. I have the power of the universe moving through me. I can do this. I can create something different. We've gone outside and prayed over batteries and had cars start, you know? <laughs> and maybe had we called the tow truck driver, they would have met the love of their life. I don't know. But in that moment, it's like, no, this sucker's gonna start and, and <laughs> move on. So we go into by me and we use the creative power that we have to have our life look the way we want it, but please don't stop there. And I've heard leaders of our movement look at this and say, science of mind will only take you to buy me. Mm. And to me, that tells me that they have no idea what science of mind is. Wow. <laughs> but you know, if all you do is use the teaching to create things in your life, instead of use the teaching to have a different experience of who you are, then I can see how you might think that. So what we want to do is we want to go from the knowledge to the embodiment. And I want to share the, this is Ernest Holmes' 1937 Science of Mind textbook. It is pretty much the end all be all of everything in this teaching. And his very final conclusion, before he gets into these essays that the back is filled with, the final conclusion, he says, in conclusion, <laughs> what the world needs is spiritual conviction followed by spiritual experience. I would rather see a student of this science prove its principle than have him repeat all the words of wisdom that have ever been uttered. It is far easier to teach the truth than it is to practice it. <coughs> so what is the principle that he wants people to prove? Cause and what? Cause and effect. Cause and effect is the law. Okay. What is the what is the principle of science of mind, Michaela? I think it is what you what you want you'll get, and but you don't have to work it out. You can do you can do anything if you put your mind to it, but you don't have to really work for it. Right. So that is the creative process. What is the one end all be all <coughs> principle? What you focus on is what you create. Again, that's the creative process. Roxanne. That there's only one. There's thing. only one. Mm -hmm. There's only one. That's the principle. Mm -hmm. That there's only one. Everything is a secondary thing to that. Now, what is it about this principle of oneness that he would want us to get? We're a part of it. That we're a part of it. 
that we're a part of something that is all that there is. What else, Michaela? I think when that people have proved that with science, so why not? So why not? Why not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, uh, initially maybe we're part of it, but ultimately uh, there's no separation. We are it. We are it. Yes, yes. And what else are you going to, because he's saying he wants people to go from the head. He doesn't want people to just learn it on a knowledge level. He wants people to experience it. Go into the heart. So what would you experience, by Karen, what would you experience uh, at that heart level? Love. Love. Mm, love is all. Vulnerability. Vulnerability and safety all at the same time. How about that? Yes. Because when you're truly safe, you don't need to protect yourself. So there is no vulnerability. So you're going to experience oneness. You're going to experience love. What else are you going to, to have as an experience of the teaching, Margaret? Peace. All peace. is well. Peace. All is well. You are the master of peace. Yeah. So wouldn't it be better for us to move towards these concepts, these principles, instead of micromanaging the creation of our lives. And I know there will be times when we'll all be micromanaging, <laughs> but let's not ignore the fact that the teaching takes us somewhere else, takes us to a sense of connectedness. Have you ever been in your spiritual practice and just felt, <coughs> felt it all? Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing to do that. And that is very different than doing an affirmation a thousand times a day. An affirmation a thousand times a day is great because we're letting loose of brain cells and making them grow onto other brain cells and creating pathways to think so our default responses are all is well, I'm at peace, everything is fine instead of holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> Right? You have a lot of, oh. <laughs> And that's the difference between the relative and the absolute. Right. And that's the difference between by me and through me. And, and I guarantee you, when you start demonstrating from the level of the absolute that I am a being of love, I am a spiritual being and all is well, I am completely supported by every aspect of life, every second, Every molecule, every thought is life loving and supporting me now. When you start manifesting from that level, your manifestations shift. Mm -hmm. and, and the parking spaces will be there, but you won't think about it. You won't have to sit there and go, all right, I know there's only one presence and one power, and that includes all of the parking spaces in the world. And I know that I, Barbara Waterhouse, as an infinite manifestation of spirit, always has what I need. So right here and right now, I claim and affirm that I have a parking space right now here at Sam's. And I know that it's here, I open up my eyes and see it, and I joyfully roll into it, and I release this into all the life. Now, three parking spaces have come and gone. <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to allow all of these wonderful and necessary things for life to show up in your life without freaking out about them, without having to do a lot of work. And when, when I treat that, when you get a card as a member, and, I'm, and you're on my treatment list for the week, I am knowing your vibrant health, your abundant prosperity, your loving relationships, and your joy-filled success. And for most people, that's it. And that's, that's enough. And then they'll say, wow, do you know what happened? Well, I know why it happened, because we were open to the total love and support of life. And so, of course, that thing healed, or that financial thing came through, or this experience happened, because we were open to all of the possibility of love and light and joy in our lives. Instead of, okay, i got to make a list of all the things I'm going to treat for. First of all, I'm going to treat that I brush my teeth. And I'm going to treat that I take a shower and that the water comes out of the, the wall. And I'm going to treat that my car starts, which for some people that's a daily treatment. <laughs> it was for me. I, I 
ran my $100 car for years by treating every time I got in it. <laughs> and it ran, it started, took me where I wanted to go easily and directly. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> and it would start. And then as I opened up to greater good, I got a car that I didn't need to treat every day. <laughs> So what we want to do is we want to get out of to me. Nobody can hurt you. Nobody can take anything away from you. Nobody can give you anything. It's all in the world within. You have dominion over the world within. And by doing that, the world without is a perfect reflection of whatever it is you have going on inside of you. So knowing that, let's up-level the world within. Let's start manifesting our lives to where we're not laying awake at night wondering how to make the mortgage payment. Let's be very clear how our life is going to work. And then let's up-level it even more into hanging out in that divine presence. Yeah. Just hang, today is, a, today is a, an amazing day. Today is the best day ever. When we say that, we don't say because, one, two, three, four. It's the best day ever. Whatever happens is a part of the best day ever. Drives some people crazy. <laughs> but what you have is a better day. And if you have better days, like Wallace Models talked about in our last class, all you have to do to have a successful life is have every day be a success. So only do that which is a success. If you're not ready for it, if you're not up to it, just don't do it. So you don't throw a failure into the mix. Mm -hmm. Only do that which is successful. So always have the best day ever. And if anything happens in that day, claim it as the best day ever. This is a blessing. And I'm not going to turn loose of it until the blessing comes out. And even if it didn't look anything like I thought it was going to look, I went in to get a raise and I got fired. It's a blessing. <laughs> Somebody had the, Michaela and then David. Um, I'm going to be honest and say that I am into me. So I'm going to raise that up, and I felt a shift today. As soon as I went to class, I'm like, something's going on. <laughs> something's going on. So, so I'm, I'm knowing that 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 divine light is coming in. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> you can completely change your school when when it's not happening to you. But when school is a wonderful experience, it will become that for you. Just like everybody else's life. David. Yeah, as I listen to you make the distinction between the absolute and the relative, I, I'm sitting here and I've, I've sensed a whole new interpretation of scripture. And that is where Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? If you focus on the things that are changing and without, the worldly goals, which most of us do as we strive for things, you're missing the absolute or the divine. And, and that's the real treasure. Right. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all else will be added unto you. And nobody in the Bible, just a little Bible trivia for you, nobody in the Bible that did what God said to do ever was poor. Everyone always ends up wealthy. <laughs> so if you look at God as Lord as law, if you're in alignment with the spiritual law of the universe and you do your work, you always end up rich. But that's not the point. When John was talking to Robert Brown today, Robert Brown was sharing with him that he, you know his grandmother raised him and she always said it's not your money, Robert. It's always God's money. And he is very, very wealthy today. And he looked at John and said, I've lived my life with that, knowing that it's never my money. All of this, it's not mine, it's God's money. I'm doing what is for the best of humanity, for the best of the world, and I always prosper. Is that cool? That's very cool. Yeah. Thank you, David. Put a little Bible in there. <laughs> so what we want to do is we want to work on the world within and back to Jesus. The kingdom of heaven is within. So we want to live in the kingdom of heaven, in the world within, that up-levels our consciousness, it up-levels our vibration, so that through the law of, of, of attraction, the law of creation, whatever you want to call this thing that manifests as form in our lives, that we're creating a higher level of experience, a higher level of livingness, because we are raising the way that we're seeing ourselves, which I believe was what Ernest was saying, was that 
just knowing it doesn't get you anywhere. You have to experience it. And when people think all they can experience from this teaching is by me, it concerns me. Because the true experience of this teaching is a sense of oneness. It's a sense of expansion that, you know, as much as we can take in, I think, I think to really get who we are, we would all just be crazy. <laughs> and I think that some people end up locked away because they got a sense of who they were. So we want to use this teaching to expand our consciousness, to go beyond the world of, I want it to look like this so that I feel a certain way, to go right to, there's only love, all is peace. You know, and, and you've had so many amazing things happen. You always have something come up out of the blue. Diamonds in the toilet, uh, <laughs> fish from the sky, <laughs> shrimp from the sky, complete in a Tupperware, skewered and marinated and still iced. On <laughs> 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 moving day. <laughs> so when you can go to, everything is fine, everything is wonderful, everything is great. I am loved and supported by life. So life's not going to hang me out to dry with the IRS. That's not going to happen. I am loved and supported. Either I'll have all the money to pay for it, or it will go away. Either way is fine. I don't have to try to micromanage it to look a certain way. I am loved and supported by life. My body is healthy because it's created out of the health of all life. I am a being of joy because joy is the real emotion of life. Joy and love. And that's the only thing that can be in my life. And so I'm going to focus on that and let the chips fall where they may because, as Abraham says, that's old news. That's the manifestation of a thought from a second ago. I'm going to stay clear that everything is fine, everything is working out for my good, there's a blessing in here somewhere, and I'm going to hold on to it until it shows up. I'm going to hold on to that and allow the circumstances of life to be what they will be, knowing that whatever shows up is all part of this divine unfoldment of me as my life. So I'm going to choose to be happy. I'm going to choose to feel love. I'm going to choose to be generous. I'm going to choose to support people. Because I know that I'm coming from having all of this. So I don't have to worry and hold on and be defensive and put up boundaries and put my dukes up to fight. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the real key. That's the real um, present from this teaching. That's the, the real aspect of it. And yes, we learn how to create, we learn how to have money, and we have miracles, we have everyday occurrence, we have so many um, uh, tumors disappear, and, and doctor's reports change, and, and all kinds of things. We have so many of those, but I think if we can hold the consciousness that all is well, that we are loved and supported, and that life is going great, we wouldn't get ourselves into those circumstances to need to have the quick fix of the binding. So I encourage you to go there. And after last week, I'll be telling you to do a thousand affirmations a day. I still want you to do that. But I want you to do it in the consciousness that the universe delights to support you. That you are precious and, and cosmic and totally loved. True. These, these are just, to me, they're steps. There's like, like learning Kung Fu. You're still carrying water. But it, it, these are important steps. And I, I got some wisdom recently. I think it was maybe... Or something. So when you start to be in the through me phase, or in the river of through me, or the vortex, whatever you want to call it, things may look the same, but wait for it. They just look the same. Right. Don't freak out because it kind of looks the same. Keep going. Right. Keep going because it, then it, everything will start unfolding. It's like maybe we're just waiting for you to make sure you're on your path and go, but you're always on your path, you know what I mean? So it's like, it may look the same, but wait for it. Right, so when you hit the runner's wall, yeah. keep, going. keep going. When you get sick and tired of doing affirmations and you're just disgusted with the whole process because you bought the lottery ticket and didn't win and you're willing, ready to chuck it all out the window, I mean, what are you chucking it out the window for? To go back to your old life? 
keep going forward. And as you move <coughs> forward, you're letting go of saying things are wrong, because by seeing them as wrong, you only keep them in that space of being wrong. You're moving to a different vibration, to a different level of consciousness, and the only thing that can happen is the outer then reflects the inner. And if you give up based on the world of the outer, you have no vision at all. Joe. I was just going to say the fact that you're hitting resistance shows that you're moving. Exactly. So you just exactly. Yeah, keep, that's the time you're to not say. Stagnant. You're stagnant. You're right. hitting resistance. That's good. When that's you get critics, that's good. That's the time to dare your fears. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. When, when I look at, yeah. at the tower, not steps, but molecules, phases, it brings to mind Maslow's pyramid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you start. Strictly in one, living in an, in an animalistic or Safety very insecurity, right? yeah, very selfish, very very insecure, and and you and you live in that almost exclusively until you get a taste of the next step. You break into it, you you absorb it, and and you can you can move into it. The same the same seems to play out um, in elevating consciousness. You start you start out. Uh, exclusively in the to me, and poor me, poor pitiful me, blah blah blah, and then I, 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 you know, you, you dwell in in what they call the ego. Through me, while you while you're in that by me, you're getting a taste yeah. at times of that through me. It's breaking through, so you're never in one. One place you can, and you can, you can, you can go retro. You can go back, and just like you said, you can go forward. But when you get to that certain comfortable phase where that you're in most of the time, you can, you can go backward, and you can go forward. Exactly. And and uh, even the, you know, even the Asmi, the Sai Baba, and and the uh, Nizargadavas, and all the all the great uh, avatars of the world, uh, they are not exclusive. Anybody? Oh no, Jesus threw the money changers out of the temple. We, we, you know, we, we are, we are one. The one dwells within. <laughs> right. all, all that's in you is in me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you or I or all of us hit that through me stage, we're also in a position to taste that as me. And whether how far we run with it, that's, that's another story. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rick and then Dakota. There's a wonderful uh, section in here. It's uh, I think it's part 16. Starts with paragraph 15. It's part 15. No. <laughs> I looked. <laughs> uh, I love that you know around where it is. It's <laughs> <laughs> heavily marked. Uh, it's part 16, paragraph uh, 15. And it. Uh, here, I, I went back and looked at it when we started talking about these four levels here. Because when it starts out of <clears throat> paragraph 15, uh, it, uh, it talks very much about that to me part because it, he says uh, uh, whatever enters the mind through the senses of the objective mind will impress the mind. And that's. Uh, you know, that this folks on the to me uh, level of it. Right. And, and then he, uh, but he goes on to once you realize that you can form your own thoughts regardless of what's going on around you as getting into the by me. But it, it, you're right, he doesn't seem to really go into the uh, absolute in this. This is wonderful. No, it, this it's, is a, it's very good. I just yeah. don't want you to think yeah. that by me is where you're going. No. no I don't no. want you to stay there. I want you to get very good at it. And then dance in the other realms. Yes. Dakota. Um, it, it seems to me that we're, we're actually always living all of them. So we're always in as me. That's who we are. It's just where our where our focus is and, and how we're actually perceiving whatever's going on. Right. Because it's not like we're not always in as me because we wouldn't be alive if, if we weren't. 
So it's it's focus. It's all it's a matter of how you're perceiving both your thoughts and the outer world and <coughs> where you choose to, to place that focus. And it's important to be mindful to think about what you're thinking about and think about what you're doing so that you notice where you are. Sometimes people just go on automatic and they don't surface for days. <laughs> and, and that's okay, but then you get to be in to me for days and create the experiences that continue to create in your life. Who else? Closing out the class. I have actually done some autopilot stuff and done back to me. And I'm like, whoa, 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 what happened? You know, I'm going back to buy me through me. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's just like, like, you, you flow back and forth sometimes. And it's just, yeah, you're on that high flying disc. I mean, you, it's, it's, it's not just perspective either. I mean, it's just, well, I guess it is perspective, but it's not just a shift of perspective. It's, it's well, it shifts in time and space. Well, and you can shift the past. Yeah, it's just, it's, wow. You, you can create something <laughs> yeah. at to me, and something happens. And you go, darn, that happened to me, and I know exactly why it happened. It happened because that person did blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> and now this is my result. And then you can start coming to and go, wait a minute. I can create this to be different. I can create this to be, well, it's fine the way that it is, and, and, and everything is always unfolding perfectly, and this does not define me, and so I can have it be a different experience. And then you move to as me, and go back to it and realize that now it's a letter from the IRS that says everything is paid, instead of the letter that said, you know, we're sending people over. You go back to it and realize that the actual experience has changed. Now, was it just your perception because you were upset, and when you saw that it had been created in the way that you didn't want it, you got upset and, and diminished it, and then that you're clear it grew? I don't know. But the way that you're ending up is that it's a better experience, that the experience actually changed from the time that it happened and you were there to now you're looking at what happened and realize that something completely different happened. It's the most fascinating thing. So just because you went to to me and just because you hung out and by me and just because it's over doesn't mean it's done. You can move into a greater state of awareness and bring in the love and bring in the light and bring in the joy and watch how the numbers change, watch how the outcome changes and other people will be, well it was always like that. I mean I look at, at physical form and just don't know what's real at times. I know what my world within is and so however that reflects back to me in a constantly evolving and changing thing called my life, then that's what I've got at the moment. Anytime I look at my life, it's a snapshot of a state of consciousness. And as I shift that consciousness, my life changes. So just because something happened, like I'm, I'm so impressed that you took nine days. Because <laughs> I think that if you had opened that letter in a freak out, you would have gotten a freak out letter. And instead, you just, you were there. Everything's okay, everything's okay, everything's okay. Drew, Steve, and then we're going to close. I, I thought that the, the phrase was, you know, tell a different story was a cop out initially. Initially. And I was mad. I was like, what? <laughs> this is a fact. This is reality. It's for happening. You no. Know, I was less right. <laughs> exactly. Because the way you saw it through a glass darkly, the way you saw it was through your limited thinking, and so that's what you turned it into. Now I'm like, ah, I see what I did there. Let me go fix that. And it's like night and day. Right. And I'm like, oh wow. I, I, I never cease to go, oh wow. So you can change your current reality, you can change your future, and you can change your past. Steve. Okay, so this might be slightly philosophical, but so like the letter, the letter is written supposedly in the past. It gets to your door, you're, you don't open it for like nine days. Now, depending on 
your attitude? Is it like basically like are you attracted to opening at the right time? It's or Schroeder's does cat. It matter, or is it just like you can right. literally shift what it says? Like I believe that you completely shifted what it said, and there are studies done in quantum physics which support that, where you have a random number generator, plus, pluses and minuses, they generate their report, they lock it away for three months, and then someone decides whether that report is going to be more pluses or more minuses. And it shows up exactly as it was decided. Way beyond the world of coincidence. We change what's going on in our life based on where we are. We bring out of that envelope what we are. So if you're not feeling big, don't open the envelope. Don't answer the phone. Don't have that really important conversation. If you're not clear about it, wait until you get clear and watch how everything falls into place. Okay? Good class. Dr. And what I know is that we are infinite beings of love and light. We are rich beyond our wildest dreams. The entire universe comes together to support our every whim. We are deeply, deeply loved. And I know that this awareness manifests as our physical body, as our relationships, as what we do in the world, and as our money. So right here and right now, I know that our finances are filled with light. They are the love of life moving through us. And I know that as we give this gift tonight, life takes it, multiplies it, and brings it back to us in the love and the light. And so we open up to being blessed. We open up our minds to know that God has ways of giving us money that we've never even dreamed of yet. And we open up our hearts to know that each one of us deserves to be blessed in this life. And then we open up our hands and let our gift go, knowing that it comes back to us multiplied. I know that each and every one of us brings our own special gift to this center. And that we come together this night to make this center a place of peace, a beacon of light, a tower of strength, and a fountain of wisdom that touches the lives of all who call it home. And so it is. And so it is. Very nice. Hold the energy. Hold the energy in the room. Don't talk. Don't talk. Don't talk. Just hold the energy and feel the creation happening. Feel it. There are molecules coalescing zooming in on us, coming into our lives in ever-expanding amounts in greater and greater ways on a continuous and ongoing flow. Money is looking for us and finding us right now. There are blessings of health and love and wholeness and peace and joy moving into our lives right now, and we are wide open for it. I know that all is well. All is well in our world, all is well in our life, all is well. So Whoever's got the basket down there, pass it on up. Thank you. And I accept being blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed again. I accept for each and every one of us. This amazing experience of life, fulfilling our every desire and our every whim, which is that we experience the love and the light of spirit as us, in every moment, in every breath, in every thought, and in every experience. So in that openness to all of the good, not just some of the good, but all of the good that life has for us, I move into a state of gratitude. For every person in this room, for every gift in these baskets, for every person that this center touches, everyone who is watching online, all of the hundreds of millions of people 
whose lives are better because of this teaching. And in that gratitude, I know that as we gave, we came with our gift. I see it as light filling up this room from the floor to the ceiling, all between the walls. This air is rich and blessed with God as us. That presence of spirit moving in and through our lives touches each and every one of us. It blesses us and it heals us right here and right now. I know it goes on out to cover this world, to shoot out into the stars, and to bring that awareness that spirit is alive and well as each of us now. And together we say, and so it is. I love you guys. Have a wonderful week.